What's below all this? Is the link layer really the bottom? When our, our packets are going from LA to Sydney on their way to Bustleton or to Hong Kong, how are they traveling? How do packets get across the ocean? Okay, they're going through some physical medium. At some level, all, all information has to be represented with some physical thing. Where do we think that physical thing is? Could it be a satellite? How do we know it's not a satellite? Go ahead. Yeah. The time it would take to do a round trip to a satellite at the speed of light is much more than 300 milliseconds it's taking us to get to Bustleton. So we know it's not going on a satellite, and it's going through big cables. There are not that many of them that are you know, going across the ocean. There's maybe a dozen or so across the Pacific. R running them across the ocean is not nearly as interesting as running them across land where there's countries and politics to deal with as well. I'll have a link to a nice story about that. We've been talking mostly about latency so far. What about bandwidth? How do we get a lot of bandwidth? Which one of these things that I'm showing you has the most bandwidth? The, they're not to scale. Yeah, I don't know how big they're else. So either the plane or the big shipping container. Certainly bandwidth per dollar shipping containers on a boat. You can fit an awful lot of terabyte drives in a shipping container. And you're going to get a huge bandwidth from that. Yes. So the fiber optic cable can transmit a, a lot of data per time. Certainly if you want your data to get there in a reasonable time and you care about latency at all, you don't want to ship it in a shipping container on a boat across the ocean. If you really just care about bandwidth, you can get enough terabytes of data in a shipping container that even if it takes a month to get across the ocean, you're dividing that amount of data by, by a month. You're still going to get more bandwidth than you do through a fiber optic cable. There are lots of places, including some that I've dealt with, where the amount of data that you record from video, if it's high quality video, people end up deciding the best way to ship that is to send cards across the country in planes. It seems kind of sad that we can't do better than that on the network, but at least in a lot of cases, it's still better to ship physical things around than to use fiber optic cables. So if we want to improve bandwidth, let's think about Claude Chap's network first. How do we improve bandwidth? And Co gave us one answer already. Right? So if we improve the encoding, that's going to improve bandwidth. What are other things we could do to improve bandwidth? Make it concurrent, good. What would that mean for this? OK, good, yeah. So we could have two arms, sets of arms and people running them per tower. If we had two per tower, we're going to get twice the bandwidth. This is really just a way of making the pipe fatter. Is there anything else we could do to improve bandwidth? That's pretty expensive to have two sets of arms per tower. It's better than building more towers. Still pretty expensive. OK, so I think we're talking about the internet, not Claude Chap's network, getting more wires. That's really, in some sense, that's the same thing as having more people on towers. And that's why, if you look at the fiber optic, you know, there isn't just one strand here, there are many strands. And the more strands you can stick in there, the more bandwidth you're going to get. Is there anything else we can do to improve bandwidth? OK, good. So I would put that in the improve encoding. If we can send more information with each time we move, for each time we move the arms, we're going to send more information. So that's certainly going to improve bandwidth. Then you get into these questions of, well, how are you measuring information? So we said we're measuring bandwidth in bytes per second. The actual information content depends on what those bytes are how much actual information, unless we're sending random data, we could probably compress it and send that information in less bytes. The other thing we could do that would improve bandwidth, and this came up in improving latency, if we can switch faster, that's definitely going to improve bandwidth. Right? If instead of being able to switch the arms twice in a minute, we can do it four times, that's going to double our bandwidth. And these are all the same kinds of things that you would need to do to improve bandwidth on the internet. You want fatter pipes, put more wires in the ground, the encoding, one of the ways you can do faster encoding is to use colors. Using fiber optic cable, you can send more information at once. Rather than just having two levels, you can have many levels and encode that to more bits. So there's a lot of things that can be done to improve bandwidth. There's a lot more opportunity there than improving latency. Once you get close to the speed of light, there's not a lot you can do. Going back to Claude Chap's time, the question of encoding more information in less space well, Morse code was invented to do that. What's the shortest thing to send in Morse code? Yeah, E is the shortest thing. And you want E to be the quickest thing to send because it's the most common letter. All the design of Morse code is to make these letters that are really uncommon, those are the ones that it takes a long time to send. Most of the ways we encode characters, say, with ASCII, every character has the same length. This is not that efficient, but it's better to do that and then compress the text rather than to have a complicated character encoding. With Unicode, it's a little more like Morse code in that there are characters that are one byte, two byte, and many bytes long that are um, not necessarily designed too much around frequency, but at least the, the size character set you're using. 